If, if someone gave you just the financials, the income statement, balance sheet of a company and didn't tell you what it did or what it was, and you were to look at, you know, profitability, earnings per share, or loss, whatever you're looking at, uh, even with, you know, know that there are, are some subsidies and some, some special items, what, what would this be worth, would you think, Tessa, if you didn't know it was a, you know, going to save the world from uh, carbon dioxide, what would it be worth? Yeah, I think at that point it gets valued like a traditional automobile company. And now, what would a that lot be? Less, a tenth? I'd say it would be a tenth to, you know, maybe at best in terms of where the stock would be today. And I think that continues to be really the, the battle between bulls and bears, because I don't view this as a traditional auto company. It's a disruptive technology company on the EV front. And I think that's why if you just looked at the numbers, you would not get to evaluation where it is today. So, Joanne, that's that's where uh, he started to, to go into what I'm, I'm looking for from you. But so the difference between where it would be valued and where it is valued is due to a lot of things, obviously, the cult of, of Elon Musk. But can you just opine on that and, and all the things that, that goes into that? I know you're a deep thinker. Sure. Well, first of all, just to pull the camera back for a moment, I actually think this is a bigger story than Elon Musk and bigger than Tesla in that what we're really looking at is this confirmation, this declaration recognition that electric vehicles are our future and, um, you know, that they're finally going mainstream. And you see it with every other automaker that is rushing in to try and compete with Tesla. You just mentioned that Hummer from GM uh, the electric battery-powered Hummer, um, you know, VW, you guys have reported on this, $86 billion they're putting in in the next five years into developing electric vehicles. So, you know, this is, you you reference, I actually think this, this charismatic, so much of this has to do with the charisma of Elon Musk. You actually mentioned earlier, Joe, you know, Henry Ford. People are trying to get the next Henry Ford. Um, I actually think about a lot about Steve Jobs, um, um, I, you know, I've been around long enough to remember when he left Apple and then came back. And a lot of people were scratching their heads about Apple, but the customers who brought those products were just rabid. It was a cult. They loved the charisma of the guy. But I do think that is also the big unknown with Tesla, because, you know, on the one hand, you've got this charismatic uh, guy with these massive following. Um, but on the other hand, you have to be able to separate the company from the founder and the kind of sometimes crazy things he says. I mean, he just said a couple of weeks ago that they're going to be set, they're going to be building 20 million cars a year within a decade. Will they? I mean, that's like twice as big almost as their largest competitor right now. Uh, and he also said in March, he said that COVID would be down to zero cases in April. And of course, he was just diagnosed with COVID over the weekend. So that would be kind of the question of separating the company from from the hype and the and the founder and how does it do absent that founder? Yeah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.